What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Let Me Finish. This is your boy, Dom. This is your boy, Gregorio. And this is your boy, Antonio. The third of the podcast. But not the least. I just, I have a habit of saying that every week. I like it. Ever since you said it, now it just, I have to say it. It kind of stuck, but I just want to make sure, Tone, that you don't have like an inferiority complex for being the third person that introduces themselves. Oh, no, I don't have feelings, so I don't really care. Oh, yeah, that's well established on the pod. <laughs> Listen yeah. back to every episode and you'll figure that out. Yeah, did I we am. try to switch it up one episode? I'm trying to remember if we did. No, it wasn't that we switched it up. It's Greg just didn't do it. The I was, time. Yeah, <laughs> I looked at Tone and I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, this is your thing. Because so. it was the week that you had just gotten back. You uh, missed the week before. So I was kind of like, oh, since he was not there last week, let's give him the second slot. Oh, But nice. you, having been off a week, were like kind of getting yourself back up on the bike and like a little (laughs) rusty also we didn't talk about me being second so i just thought we just jump back into greg being second and then me being third in the intro so we just kind of sat there like are you gonna go i'm not gonna go right right but the thing is we never explicitly explicitly talked about it i just always went second because i was like oh feel the silence yeah and then he had a problem with always going second like why do i always have to go second you just you just decided to go second well it's kind of like the middle child thing like obviously you being first on like okay you lead the pack and then (laughs) actually the third is kind of a good spot too because it's like and antonio right so it's like also, I'm here, you know, and I'm just kind of like lost in the shuffle, it feels like. Yeah, so. next season we're going to switch everything up. Yeah, after right. a lot of meetings where we discuss this in yes. detail, <laughs> with a, like on a whiteboard. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's been going on, guys? It's uh, another week. Here we are back together after our pregame episode, which was really fun. I hope everyone out there enjoyed that episode. We enjoyed it. We had a great time that day. It was fun. Yeah, I hope you listened to it and you had a little drink maybe. Um, it was a good day. We went out. We went to the Deep Elm Arts Festival. We didn't find any art. You um, know, yeah. the whole talk about like how much money would like you willing to spend. You had like, what yours was like 200? Yeah. Yeah, you didn't spend nothing, did you? No, just on alcohol. On drinks. That's, that's it. And like Ubers. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of <laughs> disappointed. I feel like the art festival, I guess since they're just now kicking it back off after being away since COVID. It wasn't as huge as what we're normal normally used to seeing as far as the Deep Ellum Art Festival. Like it used to go from blocks to blocks on, and this year it was kind of just like one block and a couple of alleys. It was like a, side street and a parking lot. Usually it's on like Main Street. It was like yeah. the, one of those little side streets in Deep Ellum. So I think the same thing. Like it was because they're like rebuilding or whatever. But, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I'm, somebody we talked to down there said that they said that um, they were trying to get back vendors from previous years and I guess the COVID thing kind of affected it so it just it felt like a fraction of what it normally would have been so that part was a little underwhelming um, the only thing I did I didn't buy any art like the rest of the guys but I got a couple cards of artists I did like some stuff they had so I may go back to their website and see if they have anything I like at some point but yeah I mean I found those cards in my pocket like the next day when I was doing laundry and Same. I just kind of threw them away and I was like I'm never gonna like why would I I'm not gonna I, keep this for any reason it's gonna go in a junk drawer and like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. yeah you have to be there to buy the art and if it's kind of real time yeah, yeah, yeah. But for i kept one car from one guy in particular because he had like this custom furniture that was like really cool and kind of retro so oh, yeah let's give a shout out to some yeah. of those some of the people we don't know your businesses or know. but yeah. you know ask us about it maybe we can find it but that one guy you're talking about is that the one with like the stereo tables yeah 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 that yeah. was so cool yeah so, that's, so that's cool. the one because I, I still have his car because i got a new wallet so i'm gonna look up his car and see what he has because he has some cool stuff that i actually would want to buy something that was so yes. cool yeah and um, that's probably one of the coolest things i've, I've seen in a very long time so yeah. it was like a coffee table but he had smaller like side tables yeah it was like yeah. one of those old school subwoofer speakers yeah that was bluetooth so it was like a coffee table and there was glass on top but you had, like the subwoofer part was like um, at the bottom, right underneath the glass. Yeah, it's it's, it's it was like random stuff you can't find anywhere else. No. And with me moving in a couple months or weeks, yeah, whatever, three weeks. I just want to get like some type of standard custom piece that's like unique and just. And it's a statement yeah. piece. That yeah. that's a conversational piece. People come over, they see that really cool coffee table that you have. They're going to ask you about it. 100%. Like I want one myself, and they were pretty reasonably priced too, which I was very surprised at. 
and they looked all really well made. So shout out to him. Shout out to that guy. We don't know his name. But I will say I followed an artist on Instagram and I just found out today she followed me back. So oh, shout out to her. Yeah. And the the three D guy, this one guy did three D art, which was also pretty cool. You had to have three D glasses to like see, you know, get the full effect of it. But I thought it was pretty cool. I That's... thought it was dope. The only thing is like when somebody comes into my house, I'm gonna be like, put on these 3D glasses so you can get the <laughs> yeah. full effect of this art. You know, like that's the only problem with that. It's cool to look at, but yeah. in reality, taking it home, it's like, okay, well, it's like remember they had uh, 3D TVs and you had to like buy glasses to watch it. Do you remember mm -hmm. 3D TVs? TVs? No. Yeah, yeah they they had 3D TVs. When? They, what year? How it was old like? Were it was like, like years ago. Like the early 2010s, I guess? I don't remember that. Yeah. Like, that's been completely sucked, wiped though. away from my Terrible. memory. They yeah, I guess it though. didn't last that long. No. Neither did the curved TVs. No. We had a... We not to bring it up. <laughs> that's like oh, a, a recurring segment. Yeah. <laughs> Your issue with your TV. But overall, we had a great time at the art festival. It was a great turnout. Um, we did some drinking after that we some did. more. We went to a few of our favorite bars. On premise, um, which, which I've never been to. Y'all been telling me about it every it Sunday. Vibe. Yeah, it was definitely fun. a vibe. Shout out to Vanessa, our bartender. Oh, there. she hooked, she hooked us up. up. Vanessa was cool. She's awesome. Um, love going there to see her, and I'm glad I got a chance to like have you guys go and you know experience where we go sometime. Yeah, I've always been hesitant, but um, I'm glad I went. It's it's a cool spot. So next okay. time y'all invite me, I'll be like more open to it. I won't say that I'll say yes, but I will be more open to it. <laughs> yes. No, that's because it's on a Sunday. One step at a time. You yeah. got to start somewhere. Baby steps. Baby and then we went to the Hidden Door, nicknamed the Hidden Sword, mm -hmm. which is a place where you can see your ex, yeah, yeah. Um, someone you're beefing with, um, a, somebody you hooked up with, a potential new something. Yeah, something. A, a potential new something something. I was not uh, partaking that Sunday, but um, yeah, I saw the other three. You're going to see somebody like yeah. You, anytime you go to the indoor, especially on a Sunday, it's going to be crowded, and you're going to see somebody you know. It's just it's just bound to happen. Yeah. So let me talk about the indoor a little bit because I have not been since fuck, uh, September of last year, right? And I was very much like my life had changed, new job, new opportunity. So I was actually really I was really nervous about going because I'm thinking, okay, the hidden door for me represented like past life in Tony. It, 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 it represented Tony who went there every Sunday with an ex, who was always drunk, um, not getting shit accomplished, those random, whatever, right? So yeah. I'm nervous about going. I'm, I'm nervous about who I'm going to meet, the interactions. But for me, it actually turned out okay. It was, I didn't have any bad interactions. It was like, oh, it's good to see you. It was a lot of that. The only downside for me going through the hidden door was that it did kind of open up that door of Hey, we should hang out. We should hang out. Let's go have a drink. Yeah. Which I'm still trying to avoid that because I'm so focused on work and getting shit accomplished and health and all that that I don't want to fall back into that loop of like constant about hangout. having friends and like maintaining friendship. Yeah, yeah because literally, <laughs> like, what a horrible thing. Like, no, yeah, it's weird, right? I tell people that and they think I'm weird, but literally, I got two pool party invites the next day. <laughs> <laughs> I got some text. That was good to see you. Somebody sent me an angry DM like on Facebook. Facebook. I just got insulted twice. So like <laughs> you had a better Sunday. Than yeah. So it was fun, right? It was fun. I had a great time. It was good to see certain people, but it was also good that certain people didn't text me afterwards. It wasn't like oh my god, whatever. But it was a good. It was a balance. So I'm still reeling from the effects of that. Yeah, I think I think it's all about self control at the end of the day and setting boundaries for yourself, like knowing. <laughs> I don't want to lie to people, but I, sometimes you'd be like, yeah, we, we're going to hang out sometime for sure. Like, hit mm -hmm. me up. And knowing mm -hmm. that I have, yeah. I have no, like, mm -hmm. interest in actually doing it at all. Yeah, I don't I have, have a the lot desire. Of I don't have the energy. I don't have the money. <laughs> <laughs> that, too. The, it's expensive. Yeah, I don't see how people do it every weekend. I know that. I, that's why I text y'all the next day. I was like, I had such a great time, guys, but I cannot mm -mm. do this every. This is like a, a once a month type of type of situation. That's fair. Okay. That's fair. And and but also for the record, um, we went to Hidden Door. I really wanted to see Donovan. It was a mm -hmm. couple drinks for all of us. Yeah. I left probably hours before these two. Yeah. And these two were like, let's get one more drink, which is Antonio's catchphrase, right? <laughs> one more drink was in full effect. This yes. My last, my last drink was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I, had I, a couple, think, I had a couple last drinks. I think that's what you're talking about when the, you're like backsliding in this yeah. other world is the one more drink Antonio. Yeah. Because he was like, he was on. He was like, oh, I'm good. Let's do one more. We're yeah. having fun. 
And it's okay to do that. I mean, and it was a holiday weekend too. Yeah, so you got to. You it got, was a lot more busy. You got to cut loose sometime, folks. Yeah, I think I think that was the one thing. Oh, I didn't tell you. Okay, so literally that's that. Okay, that's the bad part about what happened, right? So I kept having one more drinks, had a good time. I totally forgot. I had a shoot the next morning that was in Oklahoma on a holiday. Yeah, I had booked yes. it like a month in advance and totally forgot. I just I was texting a guy I used to shoot for. By the way, I do like photography. If people don't know. Um, and I totally forgot. I booked the shoot a month ago. I'm just thinking it's a random money. Okay, I can't do it this weekend, but next Monday, whatever, boom, boom. I wake up to a text of like, hey, I'm going to be paying you. And it was like 8.30 and I should have been to shoot at 9. I'm like, fuck. So, yeah, that's why like the hidden door thing is fun. But it, it totally slipped my mind that you have working money to make. So, yeah. that backsliding thing is, is real. But I got the shoot done. I got to Oklahoma. I came back. How late were you? Like an hour and a half. And what 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 were you shooting? Just a house. Oh, were they okay, okay with it? Yeah, they were fine. They okay, were, they didn't speak great English. Oh, the funny thing about that shoot was uh, the guy had a bunker in his backyard, mm-hmm. and so he wanted me to shoot inside the bunker. So I'm like, cool. So I go down. He didn't come down with me. I'm like, I'm looking back. Like, are you? <laughs> yeah. <gonna?" laughs> so I had this weird feeling. I'm like, I'm gonna die. He's gonna home. close it on you. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna be stuck in this bunker. And we didn't know that you were in Oklahoma. Nobody knew I was there. Nobody yeah, has. Yeah, yeah. So wow. So new, new fear activated. Yeah. <laughs> but it was random. I'm just looking back like, you coming out with me? And like, you turn the light on. So he came down, turned the light on, but he walked out there. But I kept looking back like, if that door shut. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What kind of bunker was this? Like, it was under the gr- underground bunker? Or? I would say like maybe three three feet of it was above ground, but mm-hmm. it just had a couple steps. It was just like, you could probably fit a family down there, a couple shelves. Not like, crazy, but. Or a photographer. <laughs> or a photographer, you know, make you a sex slave, but you know. So I almost got kidnapped in Oklahoma on uh, Memorial Day. Well, keep that address. We may need that that bunker as soon as the zombie apocalypse starts. Well, you sell in a house, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah or if Biden wins That's even better. better. The house going to be abandoned. Yeah, true. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, I do have the address, so yeah. So what's, what else has been going on since then this week? So I was in ship. Okay, everybody calls it Shipport. I was in Shreveport for work. And I just got back. Actually, I got back last night, like 8 o'clock. Um, a couple things about Shreveport. One, driving a Tesla, which is a fully EV car, electric, long distance is interesting because you don't have access to every gas station. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to strategically plan out your trips. Mm-hmm. So when I went out there, I actually stayed with a friend um, Saturday night who literally stayed like halfway in between, but it was like off the interstate. So I thought I had enough electricity to get to his place, to Shreveport. I didn't. So I ended up having to go 30 minutes away from his house, away from Shreveport, to charge just to get to Shreveport. So Jeez. electric cars are fun. They are fun vehicles. They drive great. But the charging thing is because it's still In so Louisiana, limited. at least. Well, yeah. Actually, yeah, Louisiana, well, Shreveport in particular, they only had one charging station. No way. Charge the car, And they only had six spots there, so... Where Dallas has a multi, multi, mm-hmm. multitude of them, so... Were you there always the only one there, or were there other people there? No, I, there was a couple of people there, but... I, obviously, I didn't see a lot of Teslas. Like, I see Teslas in Dallas all the time. Yeah. You don't see many there, because obviously, Shreveport's also a kind of poverty-stricken town, too. Mm-hmm. So... And here's Antonio rolling through the city in his <laughs> Tesla. Yo, I... Okay. <laughs> I felt like the ops, because I'm literally, like, in the hood of Shreveport. Like, the hoods, right? I mean, a lot of it's hood, whatever, right? And I'm in this, like, Tesla. It's, like, wrapped up with a company logo. I look like the ops. And I felt like every neighborhood I went by, people were just looking at me. And, you know, it just I felt weird. And then I drove by one kid. There's this kid literally walking by with a ski mask on. 11 o'clock on a Tuesday. Just randomly. <laughs> just full ski mask. And I'm like, bro, it's not even nighttime. I look at him. He looks at me. He takes the ski mask off. He scurries away. I'm just thinking, like, people think I'm the ops here. So, <laughs> um, aside from that, Shreveport sucks. Um, you know what? I gotta stop doing this. I keep, yeah, I add, keep that to the, add that to the list, <laughs> list of states that, that Louisiana. What I mean, next? Who, what is the next that the state on your target? I mean, if we're talking about states that are just around Mississippi and Louisiana, I mean... It's you, those three states. You're going, you're going, you're going, you're going to Tennessee? put Tennessee next? You're going to go to Tennessee? No, I actually I have a history of Tennessee. Cause like Chattanooga. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I can't trash Tennessee, but... And my family's from... By the way, if you know, my family's from Selma, Alabama. Oh, okay. okay. Um, but Alabama's shit, too, to be, to be honest. Such a historic Well, you can town. say that because your family's from there. Oh, no, I, I spent many, many of time there. Actually, you know what? That's what I didn't like about Shreveport. Shreveport... Mississippi, Alabama, those state cities, they all have a similar feel to it. It's just, it's the poverty and the lack of opportunity. You can feel it. Mm-hmm. You can feel it. There's people there who, 
when you see like the kid again the kid walk around with a ski mask i'm sitting there thinking granted whatever he's a kid whatever but i'm like this is all he knows yeah a ski mask at 11 a.m maybe it could be the music he listens to but what i see is there's a kid who probably has a lot of potential but he doesn't know it yeah because everything around him is just shit so when i shit on small cities yeah they kind of suck but i feel bad for them because there's just a lot of untapped potential in these places and there's people who are funneled into bad decisions because they don't have opportunity so that's what sucks about small towns so that's just it's just a deeper a deeper yeah it's not time. just disgust yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is yeah which i think it's red right yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like, yeah. So, so it's, it's not fuck those places it's just there's a sadness behind it of just being sad about you want to see people thrive and people do well, and it's just you, I don't see opportunity there. So wow, not you to, just said you don't have any feelings. You do have feelings. I have some empathy. Yeah, I not, just don't show it. Not to like go backwards or you know or anything, but I, I can't quote that he said people in Mississippi didn't have internet. <laughs> <laughs> not specific. We have it on tape, so that feels like bullying to me. That was bullying. Yeah, they have internet. I mean, it's not fast, but you know they got it. Greg, what's been going on? Oh sh- shit! I mean. Good, bad, and ugly, as always. Oh, Last right. weekend, I went to Austin, which my buddy Mikey, or let's call him Los Angeles. I okay. mean, it doesn't matter. He doesn't listen to the vlog. Um, <laughs> he is a movie producer, and so he had this badass Airbnb, let me stay, and I got it, like food and stuff, but he didn't make me pay. And then <laughs> hung out with a lot of my um, Austin buddies, and it was good to have everyone together. And then yesterday, I had a party for my workout class so i do camp gladiator i call it cg and i since i moved over here i went to a new classes on mondays and wednesdays at 6 30 it's at margaret hunt hill bridge y'all know okay. where that is yep so it's like a really cool scenic like class and good vibes good people so i had them over last night and i was stressed with work work was shitty this week and so i was mowing the lawn on thursday and i just kind of like you know when your mind is filled with like the next thing and yeah. the other thing and then you're like oh i also got to do that like it was just i was so distracted and like overwhelmed i um ended up just leaving my garage open open all night long and so the next day i was going to the barber and i saw it open and i was like oh shit didn't look like anything was missing but then i came back from the barber and there was a toolbox missing <gasps> and there was Jeez, i'm so sorry power drills some nice shoes some reeboks some um nikes um, so yeah, I called the police, like filed a report. They said they would call me back. And so I had this party with the CG crew <laughs> and at 1 30 AM, like they're all cleaning up and leaving. And then the cops decide to come. <laughs> and so there's two cops at my doorstep and I am telling them about what happened the day before. Yeah. And then everyone's filing out and hugging me and being like, are you okay? <laughs> like, we had a good time. Thank you. So I'm like trying to explain what happened, but also saying goodbye to people. It was like funny, but also stressful. But also I look kind of like a badass to my CG. I don't know. I kind of would have taken, taken the opportunity to my advantage. Be like, dang, you really wanted us to leave that bad? You called the police? <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Well, I think they thought that we had been like, playing music so loud that it was like a noise complaint. Right. I think some of them still think that to this day. But good times. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you've had a lot going on. A lot. Yeah. Life is full. What about you, Dom? Um, life's just been life in for the past week. Uh, went to a couple of barbecues for the holiday. And the next weekend, we went to another one. Memphis, his family, they like to get together and grill and stuff like that. So that's been really fun. Just hanging out with them. Um, and having a good time there. Work, just like you, has been very busy for me. We are normally very, very busy throughout the summer, but it it keeps me employed, so I don't really complain much about it. However, I was asked last week, the mid last week, to apply for this leadership development program Mm -hmm. or whatever. So it's a program just to give you experience of one day becoming a more of a leader you know in some other different department but this department is one that's undermined mm-hmm. so it's like preparing you to be a manager or something you know undermined like, what do you mean like it's like one of the basic levels got like, it where people first start whenever they come into the company okay okay mm-hmm. 
those teams. So they were just looking to develop leaders to to help take on those new people coming in. So Mm -hmm. I've never really been a fan of going into leadership. I'm one person that likes to do my job and focus on my own work. And I know that's different from a lot of people because a lot of people want their goal is to be a leader and to go into leadership. But I've never had that aspiration to do that because I don't like being responsible for other people. Yes. So I so I applied because I was asked to apply for it. Mind you, I haven't had to interview for anything in six years. Like, it's been six, seven years since the last time I've had an interview. Mm -hmm. So, I apply for it when they tell me to. And then they know that I'm in a different department. I'm not even in the department that's running this program, mind you. So, I apply for it anyways. They tell me that day that I have an interview in four days to prepare for so I do my best and I prepare for this interview. I go into the interview, you know, I do really well in the interview and then I ask questions about the program and everything afterwards and what all it's gonna entail. And I didn't sound, it didn't feel, I wasn't interested anymore mm-hmm. after that, but I had already interviewed for it. So yep. the whole time I'm like, I really hope I don't get this because yeah, <laughs> I really don't want, the responsibility they're basically just going to throw you in this role and just figure it out and it sounds like it no role like no raise right no yeah i'm not no. even in so like for leadership it. yeah that type of shit it's not like a promotion no. it's just like more work and also, I was like, also absolutely not managing people to me is like babysitting adults mm-hmm. in theory and i my last job i got pushed into that role my last job and I hated it because they wanted you to be a leader, but they also wanted you to be a leader the way they wanted you to be a leader, which was like the worst thing because the way they managed it was like really yeah, chaotic and amateur. So right. Yeah. So have you found out? Anything yes, yet? I found out yesterday. So it. they were. I didn't get it. Okay. So I was very happy that I didn't. get They were only picking two people, and I I don't know. It was over like fifteen or so so people that applied for it, but. They, you know, how you apply, I guess, they, when you apply for something, they give you feedback on, like, why you didn't get selected. So, I had a, a Teams call with the person that interviewed me, and she was like, we really liked you. Like, you had a really great interview. Like, you were very prepared and organized, and you answered all the questions spot on. The reason we didn't select you is because, one, you work from home, and the team of people that you would have been over is in a different department, which they already knew. And then they told me that I don't really know anybody in the office. Like, I don't go to... I work from home, if anybody didn't know that, but mm. I don't... The people in the office didn't really have a relationship with me. Mm. So she was like, well, if you want to, like, be a leader one day, like, you should just come come out to the office more sometime. And just, I like, you know why. And just volunteer to, like, help out and, like, mm. host meetings and stuff like that. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm just, yeah. you know. Listen, if it ain't about the money... Right. Also, it sounds like they wasted your time. Wasted again, my time. They knew like, you work from home. You're they they knew I worked from home, and they knew that I wasn't in the same department of which they were hiring from. And so they it's made you like, interview. why? Why? It's like did I, they just needed someone from my department to apply for it? Yeah. It was just very annoying. But it sounds like corporate politics. Like, yeah, they needed so many people to interview. That you were just like, hey, let's get Don in there. He hasn't. Right, I mean, right. So. so I did it, and, but you didn't you know, get it. No. So, so and you didn't want it. I didn't want it. So, and but you had to fake through that feedback yeah. interview. Yeah, you know. but you still want you still wanted to be chosen. I mean, kind of just because I wasted my time preparing <laughs> yeah. for this damn interview. You wanted to say no to them. Yes, I wanted to. <laughs> yes, I wanted to reject them. Yes, yes, that's <laughs> that how was, it is. That was the thing, but I ended up getting rejected. So is that like you want to break up with somebody, but they break up with you before you, before you break up with them? Yeah, and it's somebody that you didn't even want to be with. Anymore. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that happen. Yeah, me too. Actually, <laughs> on which end? What on which end? Yeah, I've had somebody break up with me that I didn't even want really yeah. want to be with anyway. Yeah, it's like, I, I'm like I'm like cool, great, but I'd rather have done it than you. But okay, no, I always act hurt. I don't, I don't know how to act hurt. I don't know. <laughs> well, this week, everyone, we don't have a topic for you guys. We're gonna do another week to where we just talk about whatever we want to talk about. The next episode, we will have a specific topic we're gonna focus on. But this week, we're just gonna talk, and hopefully, you guys will enjoy our conversation. So, Memphis, um, his a part of his gay family is in town. Are you guys familiar with 
gay families at all? Is that well, like, well, I, I have a people, gay brother, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> well, he meant literally. <laughs> I know people have like the chosen family thing, yeah. but like, I just always thought that was like your gay friends just because you're friends. So I've never really had the gay family, but explain. So uh, ha- how it was explained to me, it was like, you know, there are so many, uh, you know, people within our community who are banned, like, I don't know banished i guess in a way or just like oh so you mean chosen family kind of oh i thought you meant like that he's had like a cousin that came through that was like gay no 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 okay okay okay. so it's kind of like a thing to where the older people within the community um i guess mentor and and take up younger people in the community and then they have like a gay mom they have a gay dad they have a gay grandparents so his um gay grandparents excuse me are in town this week and i met them they're very very sweet men Wait, did you say gay grandparents yeah so who are they like the age of grandparents i mean they're older but so, so yeah. they so wait i gotta figure this out so his gay grandparents essentially it's, they have gay was, children yeah and that's uh memphis's gay Dave. parents okay so, <laughs> so i know it was it was very confusing to me but he explained it so he was like I met somebody um, when I was in Mississippi, and uh, it was an older gentleman. He uh, basically took me under his wing, and we had a really great relationship, and he asked if he could be, um, he told me I was going to be his his child, like his gay child, like Mm -hmm. someone that they look at as a literal like child, somebody that they take care of. Um, And then in turn, his gay father had parents that you know he was under so mm. his parents became his grand so this is like grandparents a, this is i guess for memphis or just those people this is like a lifelong thing like yeah obviously yeah, they've, yeah. Had, they've had their gay family for a while yeah they're just kind of like meeting people and recruiting them in yeah so it turned out like if you're accepted into the family and you become a part of this whole family you have a whole family tree and everything so it was just really cool because I didn't. Everybody has a different experience within the community, and sure. um, I think that would have been helpful for me. Like a if I would have had that opportunity to have so somebody, totally. Like yeah. I wish I had that. That's yeah, bad. I thought, and that's why I told him I was like, "Am I too old to have a gay I parent?" Think, no, you're <laughs> a gay daddy. You're a gay daddy at this point. Sorry, honey. No, nah, I can't. Mm, these these young gays are too reckless. <laughs> too I reckless. love it because the thing is, it's rare to find pure like humanness sometimes in the community in the sense that like this older man is literally like i want to help you yeah there's no strings attached right at all you know that's called love yeah Yeah. right and that's hard to find so um i wish i had one i wish i had a great i wish i had a gay great great grandpa me too (laughs) I i think it's so cool and i met them this weekend they're here in town and uh, we spent some time with them. They have really, really sweet, sweet guys. Um, really, really nice. Yeah, I think that's cool because one thing I've said to people um, who aren't gay, who don't understand it, is that it's kind of insane that we're all not crazy because growing up gay was like no person to talk to. You don't no. really have any influence, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, how do you... A lot of the things I did when I was younger, I wouldn't have done had I had someone that I could relate to, mm-hmm. that I could talk to and be open with. So... You know, you come out as gay as teenager or whatever. You're just exploring life with no guidance. Yeah. And it's kind of wild you think about it, right? Because, like, if you're straight, you can talk to your parents about stuff. Your friends. You have a friend. You yeah. have, like, a social sounding board, right? Yeah, you're doing you're... everything in, like, private and silence. And exactly. Like, secrecy. With, with no guidance. You're just No guidance. No guidance. Like, so everybody's, like, dysfunction takes a different form. Cause, yeah. Yeah. And we've, we've talked about it. Some of the stuff I've done early on, I did I, some wow. I was just thinking that. I was like, some of the stuff that I've done, like, especially in college, I probably would have never done had I had somebody that gave me guidance. If I had Who would have let me know that, like, this is actually dangerous. You don't have to do that. You don't have to go there. You don't have to do that with that person. Mm -hmm. Right. All that stuff. So that's kind of cool. You know, also, I listened to you say that about Memphis. It makes me think to, back to the religious episode we did where he mm-hmm. talked about the sense of community. And that seems to be like a big thing with yeah. um, him and maybe you guys were like, you kind of form this, I guess your gay family. It's like a sense of community you form. And that's pretty cool. I've never had that, but it's pretty cool. I mean, cool. Shout out to Memphis for being so lovable that he got adopted. We didn't get adopted. I know. Nobody wanted us. We're forever, <laughs> we're forever orphans. I just, I've been taking advantage of it. That's about it. And I asked him, I was like, are you going to want to like have a like, gay kid one day? Like... 
You know, I don't I don't know if I'm like in the space right now to where I can mentor anybody else. <laughs> you, you obviously not. You don't even want to take a leadership position. I know. <laughs> You're like, is there money in, involved? Right. But yeah, maybe one day, you know, the older I get, the wiser I get. You know. You're not ready for a gay child yet. That's no, okay. No. Maybe no, a gay pet. Yes. <laughs> I am about to turn. Oh, yeah. Think this out. 36. Greg's got a birthday coming up. So. Next up. It's. It's the, it's another year, you know. I'm not like thinking about it in the sense of like, oh, I haven't done this, I haven't done this with my life, you know. Like, I know now that like life happens in the order that you make it, but also your circumstances and everything. So, I feel good about where I am. I feel good about you know how I look. I feel good about like there's always room for improvement and I'm trying to get to that next level. Mm -hmm. And I think this whole year has been like a lot of like realizing you're not where you're at and you're like trying to figure out how to get to the next level. But you've leveled up. I've leveled up. Oh, I feel like yeah, I have, definitely. you know, like I definitely have leveled up in some ways In some ways, you know, there's still areas that I need to level more up. So I think that it's, um, exciting, you know, I feel 36. Um, and Tony, you're not, that much further behind why, me. Why you gotta throw it away? Right. right. I mean, <laughs> this is about you, not me. This is not about me. <laughs> you old too, bitch. Uh, <laughs> I wanna take the heat off me. I can't wait to celebrate your birthday. Hopefully, I'm back in town by the time so I can. Well, regardless, I'll be back that day. So I'll do something to help you celebrate. But, you know, I know you, you were like, I want y'all to like, yeah, show me a good time and like make me make sure I look good. Like we can, um, I was like, did I say that? Yes, and it was like we can take, we should go shopping. Oh, we Let's should. Go shopping and like, or find your birthday fit. Like, oh, that I'm, sounds good. I'm all for a birthday. We can fit. do our mani pedis like we talked about five years ago that I never yeah. scheduled. I mean, yeah, we could, but if it's, let's be honest. If we go to the hidden door, they're not looking at my fucking like fingernails. You wear some sandals. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> let's focus on like the important things. Fair. <laughs> But yeah, we can take you take you shopping and get you a good birthday fit. We'll do that before your your events. So. Okay, okay, okay. Bet. So that'll be like a next pregame episode. Where yeah, we're pre yeah, we're getting ready birthday. to go to the outlet. Yeah, that'll be fun. Greg mentioned something about like birthday coming up, and <clears throat> I think birthdays are always like kind of a. It's like a point of you look at your life and you reflect a little bit. So my Shreveport trip was actually a good reflection on myself because. One thing I realize I've gotten better about is I think I've talked maybe on maybe we talked about it in person, but I don't like I don't really participate in the apps anymore and hooking up. Mm -hmm. But I said, all right, you're out of town. Have a little fun, and I didn't. I did get on a app, and I was just like, I got on, I logged on, I threw a picture up, mm -hmm. and there were options, but I was just kind of like. I'd rather just chill and work. It was too mid, be honest. <laughs> okay, it was kind of mid. <laughs> yeah, it's very mid up there. But even then, like, I've done mid before, right? Sometimes it's just like, ah, eh, whatever, I'm out of town. But yeah. it's, a, it's a small, minor thing because even though I didn't do it, that could have taken up an hour of my day. I could have been doing some work or relaxing, resting. So I am proud of myself. This is a personal thing, right? Because I'm not letting those things distract me anymore. Um. So I don't know, just being out of town and like being responsible. Like I didn't drink too much. You know, I would just go work. I would eat during the day, do my shoots, come back in a hotel, do some work. I'd go grab dinner and I didn't drink much. I didn't do any, any type of hooking up. It was kind of like a, granted, Shreveport sucks. I keep saying these towns suck. But it was just like, it was a good trip because I didn't, I didn't have that guilt or that uh, falling back into old places of like wasting time hooking up searching for the next whatever I just didn't do any of it so well that's growth so my yeah, growth, shout yeah. out to that like you're you're getting older you're getting wiser and yeah. some of the things you used to do and you like more willing to do maybe aren't as attractive attractive to you they're not as fun anymore, anymore. Yeah, or yeah. They, you also like being older is seeing the the downside like when you're mm -hmm. younger, you're impulsive. You're like, oh, I want to do this. I'm going to do yeah. this. I'm going to do this. But now with wisdom and age, you're kind of like, if I, I do this, then this will happen. You know, yeah. like you have that cause, effect, cause and effect in your head. And so that is growth. But I will say, 
like traveling for work like you did mm. i used to have to go to baton rouge for like a week at a time yeah so incredibly lonely <laughs> okay, <laughs> you feel like the only person and <laughs> yeah i did okay i did feel a sense of loneliness at some point during that trip um i guess because like it was just me by myself right and no co-workers there it's just me in a hotel the hotel was like suck my car didn't work at the room half the time i had to go to the counter it's customer service was shit but you're by yourself for an entire week. You're out working, you're seeing people, you're talking to people, but you're by yourself. So I did get a sense of loneliness. And my, that doesn't happen a lot to me. So it was interesting. My therapist told me that being lonely is good sometimes and to embrace your loneliness. Yeah. Because if you aren't comfortable being alone, then you're not going to be comfortable around other people. So you have to embrace your own loneliness. You I know. like that. Yeah. I like that. Oh, I went to the movie by myself in Shreveport to see Spider-Man at like 9.30 on a Tuesday night. How was it? Uh, the movie was great. That movie is so good. It's so damn good. I want to see it. <laughs> yeah. I heard it's like two and a half hours. It's, it's pretty long. If it was, honestly, it was so good, I didn't realize it because when it ended, I'm like, wait, that's it? I want more because the story yeah. was so good. So um, literally, I thought I was going to be in the movie by myself and then two people showed up at the last minute, but literally it was just, it felt weird because honestly, if nobody would have came in, I probably would have left. It felt that awkward being in a theater. By really? Because it was a full size theater. We're I would have been mad when the two people came in. No, I, was I, like, I thought like, I had a private screening. No, no, no. It just being by yourself in a the theater in that huge dark room. I thought I like it. It just felt weird, and I almost got up and left till they came. In. Really? So, I like being. I've gone to the movies a couple of times by myself, and I kind of enjoy it. It's a vibe. For I sure. can't go during like a peak hour. I, I, I'm the opposite. Like I don't want anybody in there with me. I like people when I'm there. watching it. That because I just like being I, in public spaces like that are just weird these days. But um, I, can see that. I just kind of like chilling. I don't want nobody in the same row as me. Let me chill. Like I remember one day I was off work, just a random day, and I went to a movie. I don't remember what I went to go see, but uh, during the week, and it was me and like four other people, and it was like at Studio Movie Grill. Mm-hmm. And I remember seeing this this older woman come in, and she sat probably a couple of rows in front of me, just ordering all kind of stuff, y'all. Like she had cocktails, she had so much food she was ordering. I was like, you could tell that she's comfortable she's had a good time. with herself. Yeah, and she comes here all the time. This she, is her happy spot. She's comfortable with the loneliness. Yeah, yeah. So let me say this: it's it's not. It wasn't being by myself as being going one person. Mm-hmm. It was literally that thing. So this is the photo. You guys can't see it, but it was a huge theater. And when the lights dimmed down, being in that room by yourself, that was the part. It wasn't me being solo. Mm-hmm. I just needed somebody else in the room. It just felt weird. Yeah. So yeah. Some That's a dope picture, though. Yeah, somebody. they were way in the front. I'm like, thank God there's somebody here. But you <laughs> by yourself, I'm like, what? <laughs> so here's my thought. My thought is, what if they just be like, hey, there's nobody here. Turn the lights off. Just stop the movie. <laughs> well, they're not going to do that because they know that they sold you a ticket. I would hope, it. though, because the kids that checked me out, like, or checked my ticket, mm-hmm. they were talking shit about me when I walked in, but I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Because I, I, I took an elbow, I was kind of high. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they so said they probably weren't. <laughs> they said something about me, I'm like, what the fuck, y'all? What they say? What they, yeah. I don't remember, but... They're like, this guy coming along. I heard right. somebody say, you said that too loud. And I, I, I can tell they were... It was like a kid, and his mm-hmm. friends were hanging out at the movie theater. Mm-hmm. That's what I hate about small towns. Kids don't have shit to do. No. And they cause trouble. They're bad. So literally, this guy was working his job, mm. checking tickets, and his friends were hanging out and just being fucking teenagers, which is normal, right? So that's what I hate about small towns. Kids just have no activity. They said something to him. They said, not to me, but they said something about me, and somebody said it too loud, but I didn't hear what was said, but I can hear someone saying, you said that too loud. He could probably hear you. And I'm like, whatever. I don't care. I mean, I they were probably high. talking about drugs or something. I think the edibles, that's the edibles talking. Were your eyes, like, red or something? I had a hat on. It was, like, 9.30 at night. Nobody could see me, so... Oh. Yeah, fuck them kids. Yeah, fuck fuck, them, them, fuck kids. them kids. But Spider Man <laughs> was amazing. I can't wait for the next one. I hope it's not like three years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. It have was you good. seen um, Little Mermaid? Dumb. I have not. I want to. I want to. I'm gonna go it. soon. Maybe that's one a good edible one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go one day this week to go see it. I'm gonna put that on my agenda. Yeah, yeah. I did go see Spider Man. Me and Trent went to go see Spider Man. Shout out to my friend Trent. Shout, Shout out, out Trent. Does he listen? Have you told him about the I haven't told him about the podcast. Why not? Like, I, okay, so here's the thing. Like, I'm a little nervous to tell people that I know about the podcast who are local. I'm gonna text because him I don't want people to feel left out. We talked about that. Left Everybody feels like that. Like, like, I just hate. I hate it. But okay, like we, I want people to listen, but I don't want people to listen thinking that I don't. We don't want them to be a part 
of our podcast. And okay. That's the vibe that I get sometimes whenever people approach me about it. But let's talk about Trent. Like, obviously, Trent's your friend. You know him a lot better. Mm-hmm. Trent's like not the most like super talkative about one person. So I don't feel like he personally. I don't feel like Trent's gonna be like. Oh my god! I want to do a podcast. From what I know of him, he doesn't. Yeah, he like seems it. like he'd yeah. be like, "Oh, cool." Yeah, <laughs> like, that's, yeah. That's I think cool. I, yeah, I don't think he'll have an issue with it. Other it's just, people, yeah. I just haven't haven't said anything. It just takes me longer to say say it to to certain people who I care about. I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. Well, how many people on uh, two Sundays ago did y'all tell about the pod? Because apparently y'all were just like publicizing I, the pod. No, it wasn't y'all. So I didn't mean, say a word. From so, what I can't remember, how many people? Tony. So remember. Antonio hitting door is like, yeah, 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 yeah. So I don't know who I told. I just told a lot of people. <laughs> oh, you okay. told UK. You told I told Britain. I told yeah. I told him. Okay. Mm. Did he look at it? Like, did he pull it up and look at the? No, but somebody else I told did. This is somebody I dated briefly for like years ago. And the next day he was like, "Hey, is this your podcast?" I'm like, "Oh, I told you, I forgot." And um, I won't mention his name, but I told him about it, and. What I thought about afterwards is like, holy shit, what if I talked about somebody, not him in particular, but what if I talked about somebody and then they find out about it? But granted, we don't mention names on this podcast, so I was yeah. worried about, damn, if some certain people find out about it, they'll be like, they'll listen and figure out. Honestly. That was about me, so yeah. If, just, they, if they're doing that kind of detective work, yeah, then kudos yeah. to them because, you know. I doubt they're not. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, we're too far gone. I'm not pulling down any of them episodes. Oh, no, it is. Like <laughs> I regret nothing I've said. <laughs> so, yeah, shout out to Spotify giving us our first coin um, ad and, and making a little coin from it, which is cute. So, where's that money going? We're just it's just saving it right now, saving it and for merch. Oh, yeah, for merch. Okay, so yeah. we should get like, um, can't wait to get some merch. Let me finish. Um, I'm looking for hats, shot glasses. Hats. We should get shot glasses, shot yeah. glasses, hats. Um, yeah, hats hats. for sure. Like, we need like a mascot. I'll work on it. Let me, let me see what's <laughs> what I can. I've never heard of a podcast mascot. Yeah, <laughs> I like the idea of it though. The family cruise that I had been mentioning going on with my parents is actually happening, guys. It's taking place next year. They moved it from this year. Oh, I thank God. They thought it was going to be oh, next this God. year. But they moved it to next year, you next March. And um, it's been booked. Okay. So we are officially going on a cruise next year. It is six days. It's a six-day cruise. Nice. Going to Jamaica. It's going to the Cayman Islands. Oh, and then it's awesome. going to Casamil, which I, I've been before. So, um, yeah, it's going to be a good time. Um, I've been inviting people. So if you guys are interested in you coming. Cruise, really? I'm literally doing it on the podcast okay. right no way we can come you can come because yeah. round rock was saying he wanted to go on a cruise and i'm like okay yeah fire. yeah it's next march um it's leaving out of miami and yeah it's gonna be a good time i'm excited i've never been on a cruise oh you never you've never been on a cruise never Mm-mm. do you know if you get seasick or you uh know? i've gotten seasick before when i was a kid and a little bitch but i think well, i probably <laughs> I guess I feel like I probably have like sea legs now, you know. Sea legs. I mean, you can buy stuff on the ships. If you yeah, need, you. But. They have medicine that you can take. Oh, That's, drama me. Yeah. yeah, I did take some of that when, on my first cruise, but I only needed it for the first day. I was like, let me take it on the first day. You know, see if I really actually needed it, and I didn't take it anymore after that. I was fine. fine. Yeah. Oh, when, you had mentioned something too, Dom. Um, which is a great idea. You talked about how like you were saving money for like a tr- your trip next year. Aren't you mm-hmm. going to? Where are you going next year? Not the cruise, but there's another trip you have. Or later this year. You're going overseas somewhere. Thailand. Thailand. Okay. So I'm glad you mentioned that on the last episode because now you were saying how you were saving like 150, 200 bucks per week or mm-hmm. per pay period. So I started doing the same thing. Good. Because I'm like, fuck. Like, instead of like something coming up, oh, I got to take 200 bucks or whatever out of my bank account, mm-hmm. just put a little to the side. So I started doing that. So I'm like, now I'm like, I'm kind of ready to plan something big next year. Yeah. Mm. So just put money to the side. And then when that time comes, you pay for it. And there's no money out of your pocket. It's just, yeah. So I started doing it. You already have it. See, that's just, I'm, I'm a stickler for saving. I, yes. I love saving and just having that opportunity to having that self-control, knowing that you that yes. money is there. And you could just spend it all, but, but you're, you're holding off because, you know, you have bigger plans. Yeah. So my savings account's going up. I'm happy about that. So now I added my... 
travel savings account, which is great. So I can't wait to get with my friend Austin so we can talk more about going to Thailand so I can put that on my calendar for next year. So Thailand, is that going to be you, Austin, Memphis, and some other people or just you guys? Yeah, some other people like uh, Austin, hopefully her Austin's girlfriend can yeah. come. Um, hopefully, you know, some John and Mackenzie can come. Oh, fine. Hopefully we're all really good friends. So, yeah, hopefully, hopefully that happens. Oh, so, Mackenzie was in like some pride campaign. Did you see yeah, that? Yeah, I saw she, that. Shout out, in, to like, her. Uh, Shout out to my girl. Yeah, she was in the magazine. What is the magazine called? I have no idea. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. But like she was in a spread, you know? Mm-hmm. Nice. So I was really impressed. And, she, yeah. you know, she looked great. Yeah, some beautiful friends. So uh, let's talk about Pride a little bit. So, um, oh, it is Pride Month, so it makes sense for us to talk about Pride. It is. So I guess what I want to talk about with Pride is this year feels interesting. So because there's been a lot of a lot more backlash towards Pride, and I don't know if it's because of the political climate or what's happening, but it, I've never felt so much pushback on Pride. Right. So for me, I'm not like a big flag waver necessarily. Like I'm not against anything. It's just. You know, I'm gay. It is what it is. I don't have to like necessarily wear it on my shirt or whatever, but I just find it interesting that all of a sudden this year, for some reason, there's such a pushback against it, and I don't know where it's coming from. So, like, I know Target faced some backlash. Um, and they've yeah. been doing that shit for years. That's what I thought. So, Target... And no one has said... I mean, no one has no really one said, said a word. Yeah, right? like, I, every gym, Target has a big pride thing in the front of the store. They have, like, clothes, sandals, random accessories. You know, companies change their logos. It happens every year. So every like, year. Nothing's different, but all of a sudden this year, it's just like there's a huge pushback. It's like companies are scared to uh, celebrate companies? Yeah. Pride this year. And I think, like you said, I think it has a lot to do with the politics behind it. Yeah. They're already trying to ban drag shows in public spaces, which which I don't really understand at all. That's so stupid. Um, shout out to all the drag queens out there. We love y'all. We support you guys. You make us laugh. You make us Yes, dance. I love drag. I love drag queens. I'll always give you some dollars. Yes. Right, but hold on. I have a quick comment, though. So mm-hmm. I'm not on the ban drag queens wave. My only thing is knowing some personal things that have happened. What the one thing I'll say about drag shows is I do feel like at some point they have. Um, I hate this. Oh God! It's gonna. I'm gonna sound conservative, and I'm not because I'm not political at all. But to some extent, drag shows this year becoming mainstream, they have kind of pushed that into spaces that. I feel like they don't need to be in, right? So one example is in Dallas, Texas. There's a neighborhood called, uh, is it Highland Park? or It's near White Rock. Um, they were trying to do drag shows in this area. And this area is like not really a gay area. It's just like a predominantly uppy area, a lot of nice homes. But there was some pushback earlier this year because they were trying to do drag shows at some restaurants in this area. And one of my thoughts was, that's not your audience. And... The one thing about drag shows is, like, I don't necessarily enjoy them, but I've had fun in them from time to time. I don't hate them. I don't love them. It's just whatever. I'm not against it. I just sometimes wonder with certain things, and I hate to say the word agenda, because I, okay, let's not even say the agenda. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes you have to know your audience. So, example, having drag shows in certain demographics, certain areas, doesn't equate. Well, at the, end of the day, yeah. at the end of the day, these drag queens are making a living. Yes, so absolutely. Yeah. They're trying to push it anywhere, you know? They yeah. want to perform anywhere where they're going to get them coins. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, as an enterprising business, uh, they're their expand. own CEOs. Yeah. I, I feel like anywhere that they can get booked is probably, like, a job's a job. For them, it's money. Like, I want to make money, yeah. Well, it's about more than that. I don't have to disagree with you, Tone. <laughs> I'm sorry, but... I feel like there shouldn't be limitations on where you choose to express your art. At, at the end of the day, drag is an art form, sure. and in any there should be nobody allowed to say where somebody is and isn't allowed to express their art. And I think that's why we really need to think about that because even though they may not have an audience much out there in that area where they were performing, it's still important to have that exposure to that particular art form and maybe it could turn people around to to seeing what drag is about so these people who are trying to ban drag queens and drag shows in public spaces probably have never even experienced a drag show before um, and then they want to blame the drag queens from people bringing their kids to the show sometimes like that i don't always agree with 
that's within the parent. That that parent is going to make the decision that they want to based on their child. And you know the type of show that it is. Not all drag shows are raunchy or like sexual. Like that's not what it is when going into it. So um, I just don't. I don't like putting limitations on where and where not people should be able to express their art in that way. Because, well, yeah. I think it's entertainment at the end of the day. At the They're end of the day. entertaining. They're making people like happy and laugh and like be transported somewhere else, you know, from their shitty lives. You know, that's what the whole purpose of going to see a movie is. Entertainment, right? Yeah. And so at the end of the day, it's not a political act for a man to put on a dress if that's how his art takes shape and that's how this person expresses themselves. Mm-hmm. Then like who gives a fuck? It's yeah. become political because people are pushing They've back it. on it in They've a way that's like, yeah. it's. I don't think performing drag is a political act. No, it's, it it's be, no. not any more a political act than like a stand up comedian like telling jokes. It's yeah. just their profession. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And, and yeah. they're trying to sexualize it and using children to do it. You know, saying like, I don't want my child to be exposed to this at, at such a young age. Yeah, y'all, like, you were about to say the word agenda, and I just don't. That's why. Like that's that why I stopped. Yeah, that's why I pulled that word. I hate that word because it sounds I like. I hate yeah. that word. There is because it gets used the wrong way. Too. Yes, yeah. like there's no secret agenda out there that gay people are trying to turn kids gay. Like there was no agenda that turned me gay. Like I just just being, happened to be born that way or feeling that way. There's nothing that happened to me that um, caused me to be the way that I am. So I really hate that, and I hate that these companies are being so scared this year for sure to celebrate pride so the only thing about that is at the end of the day when you look at companies their bottom line is money right so we all know Bud Light has gone through when they put the trans person on the can Mm -hmm. and I guess doing some more research it wasn't like on every can or whatever but they put it on the can I thought uh, she was just in the commercial she was yeah she was in like a it was on a can I I thought it was on a can or it, it wasn't like every can in like every grocery store or whatever but the unfortunate part about it is we've become so not us we've become so political as a society that Bud Light has actually lost a ton of money. So I think that's that Bud Light thing has had a trickle effect because Bud Light has lost a ton of money, and I think other companies are scared to face that backlash of like those people that support them, and you know. So I, I hate that you know. So the the whole thing of the story is I hate that we've as society as a society I hate that word <laughs> uh, I hate that we've become so political based because at the end of the day it's like. People is people. People should do what they need to do. As long, my, my overall thing personally is like, as long as what you're doing isn't hurting someone, it shouldn't matter. You're not, you know, putting someone at danger. You're not, whatever. It shouldn't matter. But everything's so political now, unfortunately, that things like this happen. So my closing thing on the um, drag queen show is like, I think there is, in any situation, you have to realize what are the circumstances of what's happening right now. And the unfortunate part is there's a lot of pushback from it. And to me, there's a place and time for everything and that god that sounds so bad when i say that <laughs> there's a time and place for everything it sounds so bad i just yeah i don't know how i feel about it i just i want people to be able to perform have a great time make money um i don't know the pride thing is interesting pride is i interesting. just don't i don't really have pride and it's like oh yeah it's june oh it's pride weekend yeah Something i'll like go to that. some bars because it's gonna be lit but yeah like i don't get extra i've gear. never been on a float i've never been I, I never make it to the parade it's always too early it's always at like 10 <laughs> like 10 a.m <laughs> okay side effect we didn't so memphis had texted us about the parade yeah like, the other weekend and we were like none of us knew it was even happening and that's not because we don't care but i'm just not like a i need to go stand at a parade and wave a flag necessarily like to me being gay is, i'm just gay it is what it is i don't want to put a flashlight on it it's just it is what it is so i don't know i don't know i i guess we all just have our opinions on it i enjoy going to the pride parade i don't go every year but i think it's a way to to celebrate you know being proud about who you are and I, I think pride can come in different shapes and forms like that's true just because some people don't go to the parade or they don't got a flag flying outside of their home or apartment like that doesn't mean that they aren't prideful of what they stand for it's just people just have a different way of showing it and you know i didn't go this year because i didn't want to be around a lot of people 
and um, I just it was hot outside, it honestly. Hot. Yeah. So it wasn't really attractive. But I've been to a bunch of pride parades before, and it feels good to you know be a, be around people that are supporting you know our community that we are part of. You know, it just feels good. But I understand if if people don't come to it because you know not everybody's into that. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just hate parades in general. But yeah. Just <laughs> if you know, I, I I hate all parades. I think they're just weird. Really, they're fun. No, they're not. They're weird. I yeah. just I they just... are always kind of like, oh, that was it. I like, mean, is, yeah. there, is there another cool float coming? Because <laughs> uh, all these floats have been made. Funny story. I went to uh, me and a friend went to Colorado Springs years ago. And we end up going there. It happened to be Pride Weekend there, so we went to the parade. It was literally 17 minutes. It was the funniest shit ever. Really? It was exactly 17 minutes. It was over. That was it. We stopped. <laughs> was like, oh, that was it. <laughs> I mean, I think it would be cool to go to like the, the Christmas Macy Ugh. Day Parade Ugh. in New York City. No. Disgusting. If I'm like, buying it in New York, it's not for the Macy's Day Parade. That's probably the worst <laughs> parade ever. That's just the worst. Yeah. I could get See people. all the big old balloon, like, in balloons, inflate, inflatable. You'll be bored for five minutes. Probably. Snoopy you know, takes 20 minutes to drive by you. It's like, all right. What about Mardi Gras? You guys want me to go to Mardi Gras? I would love to go to Mardi Gras. Me either. I would love to go to Mardi, like, Mardi, Mardi Gras. That's not a parade. That's different. That's a celebration. Okay, I was in New, New Orleans. I was in New Orleans uh, a couple years ago for Halloween one year. And I ended up staying two days later because I ended up hooking up with this guy. We just hung out the whole time. Wow. But You, like, extended your trip? Oh, yeah. Tell wow. Him. It was fun. It was just one of those, like, you know, once we get after. Yeah. Um, but I had so much fun in New Orleans because they just parade throughout the street randomly mm-hmm. throughout the day. It's not like, a, all right, the parade's at 10 o'clock. It was just randomly people marching through the street, parading, singing. The energy and the vibe was so good there. So that I like. Parades are shit, but I like just random celebrations that are just fun and whatnot. So I mean, talking about celebrations, there's one coming up next weekend, you guys. Or what? What's the parade? Weekend? Juneteenth weekend is coming up. Well, I'm off work. My job gave me the day off. I'm like, yo, that's crazy. Did so, they give everybody a day off? I don't have the day off. At the company? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, I didn't know I, I don't have the day off, but I might take a day off and protest. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but um, yeah, Juneteenth weekend is coming is. up, Juneteenth. and it's a lot of people are coming in town. There's a lot of events going on uh, to celebrate um, Dallas. It's every Juneteenth weekend they do the the Black Southern Pride. Um, Dallas has that. Yeah, so it's always Juneteenth weekend. So it's uh, a lot of people coming in town. It's going to be a good time. They have a lot of events and stuff going on. So let's talk about Juneteenth. Um, I don't know. So you're from you're from Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, I discovered when I moved here that a lot of people outside of Texas didn't know about Juneteenth. Like, yeah, I, I didn't know about was... it until like I learned about it 2015. Okay. And I remember a coworker. She's from here. She was talking about it. She's like, you don't know what that is. I'm like, I don't know what that is because we never talked about it. My parents didn't talk about it. Mm-hmm. It was in a school thing. So it's interesting how I guess kind of that 2020 BLM movement and everything that happened in 2020 kind of prompted. Uh, Juneteenth becoming like such a thing so yeah it's a very important holiday yeah. for our, our culture and our people and I learned about it in high school probably like my junior or senior year during the history class they taught the you? first time yeah they, we we learned it and then of course I took um, a black history class when I went to Memphis for college so we learned more information about Juneteenth then as well so I've kind of always known about it it's mm-hmm. not something that we always celebrate it. I don't think I've I know. Yeah. been done anything to celebrate it until I moved here. Um, then I found out about that it it was it correlated with the um, Black Gay Pride. So also, you know, yeah. Oh, so the, so next weekend the people that are coming it's for like Black Gay Pride. Yeah. So yeah. Oh. they usually do it during Juneteenth weekend. Okay. So are you and is going out to anything? Because I I'm not aware of what's happening. Yeah. I'm, I'm we, on social media. Either, so. We don't. I mean, we don't have any plans right now of anything in particular we're going to. Uh, it's also his bre- his best friend's birthday during that weekend too. So whatever he wants to do. Yeah. Will be a part of that, um, but yeah, if we go to an event or something, you I'm guys want to come? I'm in town. So. You should definitely. Try to do that for sure. I'm down. I should be in town. It'll be hot. We'll be sweating, but it'll be fun. Yeah, it was a good time. We had a great time last year. My sister was in town mm-hmm. last year, and we went to the pool party, and there was performances, and we got to see Santana and the City Girls performed. I feel like somebody else performed, but I can't. Oh remember. yeah, I remember that. I remember uh, your the stories. City Girls. That was pretty big then. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep, my girl Nancy was with us. We had a great time that weekend. So, yeah, this should, this should be a good time. So, I'm looking forward to it. Yes. So, yeah, we have a couple of questions that some of our listeners submitted to us for this episode. Who wants to kick things off? Uh, I will go first. Yeah, okay. so a uh, user submitted a question from Round Rock. He's our boy. He lives in um, Round Rock. <laughs> 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 and um, he comes through a lot. He's very special to me. Shout out to Round Rock. Shout yes. out to him. So he had a question, and it's, how many times a week do you think you should have sex in a living, and then in parentheses, gay, and then out of parentheses, relationship? Mm-hmm. Question mark. Very specific. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, since I'm currently in a relationship, you're the best to answer this. Yeah. I think because I couldn't tell you honestly. Man, maybe like once or twice a week, maybe just once a week. It doesn't. And I think there should be some form of of sexual activity going on every week, uh, just because you know it's been a long week. You're there with your partner, and if your partner turns you on, then you should want to like do things to like re- relieve each other and have a good time and be in the moment so um i think we are both compatible as far as sex drive is concerned so we don't have any issues there but yeah for for us maybe just once or twice a week having some type of sexual contact it's really good that y'all are on the same level yeah you know what i'm saying because oftentimes it's like one person is like has a higher and another person has a lower you know yeah i know, I know when you've had a living a gay relationship tone I think that it was y- he wanted it more right yeah what I'll say is um, don't date someone who takes steroids and that's not a shot at anybody <laughs> <laughs> it's very specific yeah <laughs> but it, it, it's a very specific thing because I've dated two people who've taken steroids and when I say steroids I'll be honest I've never taken them but the two people that I was engaged with they took them more for uh, it was beyond like low testosterone. They were taking steroids for the physique of it. Which okay. Shit, it works, right? It works. But it does cause the side effects of that is it does cause a very high sex drive. And also, I feel like it makes you a lot more emotional or quick to react. So, because of that, these two people were, and again, I'm not taking digs at them at all. That's just, it, it is what it is. But they were very highly sexually driven mm-hmm. and normal. You know, not that I've never had like a low sex drive, but one of my things has always been a turn off. If someone's like constantly pushing at you for sex, it's yes. a turn off. It's always been a turn it's, off. Yeah, so, so much a turn off. Yeah, so it's hard dating someone that probably needs it like every day or every other day or constantly talks about it. That's always been a hard thing to juggle with. So I think, yeah, one, two times a week is probably, I think that's like a standard pretty good rate. Yeah. Um, even if you didn't have sex, maybe once or twice a week, even some type of intimacy, like a makeout session of just cuddling and stuff like that would be what suffice just to some extent. But yeah, I think Don's answer is pretty, uh, pretty solid. I think once a week, yeah. Once, twice Anything less than that, like... Y'all don't like each other. Y'all don't like each other. You yeah. want And I'm sure there's <laughs> weeks where you in Memphis, it's busy, and you yeah. just don't get around yeah, to it, time. right? Yeah. But as long as that's, like, the exception. But if it's a month, it's like, all right. Yeah. What's going on? Right. And we're talking, like, full full sex. Because I think well, we need to talk about, like... Yeah. I don't think it has to be full I sex. I don't think it has to be full sex. I'm a stickler for, like, not always having to have full sex because there's so much more prep. to do you can do yeah, yeah. So <laughs> you're in the other direction that's, that's, a, that's a lot of prep that goes into it and if you're not the main person that's doing it it's a lot for somebody to like have to like watch what they eat and everything like that so there's other things that you can do that i know that turns me on and we can still get off and have a great time and i count that as far as sexual activity and yeah, I would totally agree. Totally agree. So definitely with that expanded like definition of sex, like it's got to be twice once a week. Yeah, about twice is yeah, pretty good. Yeah. So I have a the, I have a question from <laughs> Thank you Ron Rock by the way. <laughs> Thank you for that question. Um my friend John, um who is a heterosexual man and he just sent me a random question that is, I guess, on tone for, for the last one we just had. What is anal like? <laughs> What's, He's straight, by the way. Yes. <laughs> What's up with that? I didn't expect that. Do all gay guys like to no. do it? No. 
<laughs> so that is his question. Okay, and this is um, an important question. Thank you, John. Um, because the rise of the um, side, you're all familiar with this term, the side. Mm-hmm. You haven't been on the app in a second. So a side is someone that doesn't have penetrative sex. Wait, and what? Yeah. That's, that's a side? What? That's yeah. a side? Yeah, what do you oh, think it was? I thought you meant like a side piece. No, no, no. Like, if you get on Grinder now, your option can be like top, bottom, verse top, verse bottom, like, or side. Or side. Interesting. Oh, wow. yeah. This is new to me, so. Yeah, so side is essentially they like to like, I mean, do it like, they like virgins the virgins do it. They like to frot, which frotting think, is, is an actual thing. <laughs> frot, <laughs> explain what I'm frotting sorry, is. Yeah, so is frotting? frotting is basically, um, there's no penetration involved. It's basically just humping. Like your your naked bodies on top of each other or or some way touching each other is like basically like humping and people get off on doing yeah it's that. the friction yeah it's the friction okay to be fair I've I've done that before but it's not something I would seek out so when you said okay is side and fro- frotting they're like interconnected like yeah. but they're not quite I, the same no they're I the don't same hear thing the term side all the time yeah, but it's like the last year or so it's like. Uh, an option, right? Mm-hmm. So when someone's aside, it's just like I want to fraught, basically. Mm-hmm. So my thought was like when you said side initially, and you said there wasn't penetration. I just assumed that okay, two people can get together, do stuff, but you're not literally penetrating each other. I just thought you know maybe we're body contact, we're rubbing, kissing, oral, blah blah blah. So it's all about the body contact, like yeah. But the humping thing, yeah, I I've done that like once or twice. It's been like cool, but I'm like this is. A lot of work for nothing. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, you still I it guess, hits. I, I will say, like, it works. I mean, Daryl always calls me aside. I've, I've had a few um, frotting experiences, in but the, I hate the word been, frotting. You I know? do too. When <laughs> someone's right. like, "When you're like, what are you into?" and they're like, "Frotting." frotting. The first time someone said the, the word frotting to me, I was like, uh-uh. "My rule is, <laughs> if I don't know what the terminology <laughs> is, then I'm not into it." Right. <laughs> right. Because. I've been in this game long enough that, like, if there's something new, I'm, I'm probably, probably not. not into it because right. I've done, I've, I'm okay with the options that I have, you know? <laughs> and so when someone first explained to me what frauding was, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. I like that. <laughs> you know, I like to fraud. I'm a frauder. It's just the humping part I don't care for. Yeah. I mean, it's not, I mean. It's not just that. It's but. a growing community of people who are that enjoy that and listen to our side listeners like we support you we stand with you we go to the pride rally for you there should be a a side parade (laughs) (laughs) but to answer your question john not all gay men like anal um some people are really strict and they don't want anything going back there at all um, not a tongue, not a finger, not a toy, not not anything. So it's all about what you enjoy. Yeah, and, and know, some people want like, you know, the tongue, the finger, the the fist. Every oh yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah, some or people the, some or, people really get into that. Or the traffic cone or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you gotta I'll tell us that story. Or the glass jar. <laughs> I've seen that. No, not me. I've seen the video. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember that video? Of the guy with the glass jar. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yep. I wonder what happened. It broke. Yeah. It was. It was around the time of Two Girls, One Cup, mm-hmm. where a guy just sat on a glass jar and it broke, it broke inside of him. Inside of him. Oh. Where's he at? I wonder if he's okay. I, I mean, I that was know, a doctor's right? vision. Yeah, that was an expensive sorry. ER bill. Like, Imagine being that doctor. He probably that. wasn't insured. That guy definitely <laughs> wasn't insured. And this was for OnlyFans, so he couldn't make any money off that either. Right. He just wow. went viral for the wrong reason. I think it was called One, one Guy, yeah, One Jar oh. or something like that. <laughs> For those of you who want to look it up, it, it, it's yeah. at your own, at at your your own, own at, risk. On your own time. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so yes, John, to answer your question, no, not all gay guys like anal. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody, but also it's like some people are, there's also kind of a spectrum of people that are kind of into it or into it and haven't explored it or we'll, we'll take a finger up the butt, but mm-hmm. like maybe not anything else, you know, yeah. like... There are variables. Yeah. You know? I think it's probably like women. I think there's some women that do anal and many that don't. So I think it's similar. But obviously with guys, you have to do it if you are a certain position. But 
There's some women that like it and some women that don't. So. That confuses me. What? Because what? if I'm a woman, I already got holes down there. There's already right. Yeah. I'm not and about that's, to. It, they already have a hole that God had actually intended. I have so many questions. <laughs> if, if, if there are any women who listen to us who are as open enough to talk about an experience with Bono as being or doing anal on um, I'm curious because what is the prep like for a shrep, for a straight woman? Because I feel like a lot of the times when women do anal, it's like on the spot. Like they're not prepared for the guys. Just like, oh, let's try this, mm-hmm. and it's like, There's what if lot. she's not prepared for yeah. for of, all of that? There's a lot of back work to uh, yeah. Make sure you're ready for that. I mean, as as a gay man like we sh- should be doing what we need to do to prepare if we should know be. that's going to happen there are some out there who don't do the great job at it but at least they do something to to try to prepare for it so i wonder how that's like as like a heterosexual couple yeah my thought on that is like maybe that's our purpose and that's our mission is to educate straight women mm-hmm. on how to prepare for anal you know i just wonder if they already know i don't think that they do <laughs> i think it's like that beginner's look i don't know if y'all had that beginner's look could you uh, anal? know <laughs> yeah where you didn't know nothing about nothing but you still did it and somehow it just worked out <laughs> And then one time it doesn't, you're just kind of like, like, oh, "Oh, wait, there's more. How do you do this? Yeah. (laughs) I think we all have beginners luck because if I would have had one of those, if I would have had an incident early on, it probably would have scared me away for life. Me too. Like, I just, it's it's embarrassing, first of all. But yeah, (laughs) definitely kills the vibe. Oh, 100%. Been on both sides. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I got to tell the story real quick. There was a there was somebody that I engaged with on a regular basis. <laughs> like you currently? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the person you moved to the new. Shut year. up! Shut up, Greg! Shut up! <laughs> so, <laughs> shut up! <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, <laughs> it's so funny. Okay, so we were getting ready to do our thing, and I go to his place, and we're getting ready to do the anal thing, as we talk about, right? And <laughs> the, anal thing. the anal thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm getting ready to do my thing, and I look at my leg. I'm like, "What's this on my leg?" <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. but hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It turns out it wasn't that. It was okay. like he, he he'll wake up late at night and eat like desserts or whatever in his fridge. He had like this frozen chocolate <laughs> strawberry thing that he ate in his bed. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm looking at my leg. I'm like, once you see it, it's like, what is this? It's chocolate. <laughs> it was chocolate. It was literally chocolate. But literally, we couldn't finish. I'm like, I, I can't do it because once you, because he was eating an eclair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, we literally just last week. Then I asked a question like, who's ever done something with food? Oh well, yeah. No, no, this wasn't with food. Though. Intended. This, was, this no, wasn't no. intended. It yeah. actually killed the vibe. He <laughs> ate last night and like he dropped the pizzas. He ate and fell asleep and dropped a piece of chocolate in his bed. And then I happened to get it on my leg. I was just about to. <laughs> You know, that's, that's your regular. Why that's so funny. Huh? Yeah, but. That's your regular. Why is he eating sweets in bed? Well, he, he, he sounds up, like a slob. No, no, no he's not. <laughs> he gets up late at night and snacks. He will snack it late at night. So yeah. Okay. I'm first of all, I'm pissed about my sheets. That's why I'm chocolate all on my sheets. It was his. Yeah. It was his best. So it wasn't, wasn't my problem. That was a wild. Oh but it gosh. wasn't. It but wasn't, you had to stop completely because it was like no, just the once you, mere once, like once it's in your head, it's like it didn't have a smell though. So no, why? that's the thing. Because I'm sitting there like. I was trying to get, I was trying to go through with it, but I'm like, I don't smell anything, but it's there. And, and why is it on my fucking cap? <laughs> yeah, no, it was on my thigh. It was on my thigh. Oh. I'm like, where did this come from? I don't smell anything. I don't see nothing. <laughs> so I stopped. He was like, "What's wrong?" I'm like, um, "See, you need to grow up, Antonio." He, no, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel bad for him because what if he too. actually did prepare? No, he did prepare. He was prepped. He was ready. And, he was ready. ready. No, he always, and then you call it off because ready. you got a little chocolate. But on he a little it. chocolate. That's he, all it took. He understood. He was like, you know, what? I get it. And we came back tomorrow and did it. It was fine. So, Lord. Oh. And he cleaned up his bed. <laughs> he didn't eat sweets in his bed. He washed his sheets. We've not had an incident since then, and I will never say his name on this podcast. But I mean, I, I wouldn't she would, call that I would, an incident. I wish was... she would have blocked you. I yeah, would have <laughs> would she would have no, we we talk every day. We're cool now. <laughs> well, shout out to Chocolate Man. <laughs> We're not calling. No, that's not his name. Okay. <laughs> so I have another random question for our friend Sheila. 
Shout out to Sheila. Hey, Sheila. Sheila. Favorite bartender. Love you, babe. She wants to know, what is your favorite thing about yourself? Ooh. That's a really good question, Sheila. Good question. Because nice. I could go for, I could fill a whole podcast episode about the things that I don't like about myself. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I was about to say, I was about to say, look at self-love, and then you said, things I don't like about myself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I uh, mean. That's a hard all, question. I need to, somebody else needs to go first. I can't. Um, I, I really like my personality. Oh, like, you do have a good personality. I feel like I, I feel like I'm very consistent in all aspects of you are. how I am, and um, if anybody doesn't like me, I'm not aware of it. So it's, I think I'm just a very likable person, and I'm a very genuine person. And I think a lot of my friends know that and see that. So yeah. um, I just admire, I guess, my personality, I guess, would be the best thing. I just... I would agree. You're very consistent across the board. Yeah. So um, go with the flow. Yeah, you do do go with the flow. You have a great personality. So to piggyback off that, I guess, I think I have a good heart. You know, mm-hmm. I think my actions don't always speak to that. But I think that, like... If I realize I did something wrong, I'll course correct. I love people, even though I'm kind of an introvert. Like, I'm always rooting for the underdog. I'm always trying to, like, help somebody. Like, for example, you know, my um, coworker came to the CG party, and she, our company moved her to Dallas from Wisconsin, and she's awesome. She's, like, 23, maybe. But, like, she was there, and it was, like, a lot of kind of juggling back and forth from, like, you know when you're at a party and you have to, like, make somebody feel included, right? So it was a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like, not to say like, oh, I'm an awesome person, but it's just like, that's something that I excel at is like yeah. loving on people, you know, and loving people. I agree. I could see that. For sure. sure. So I guess I'm her gay, gay dad, maybe. No. no. <laughs> gay stepdad? <laughs> you maybe. <laughs> she doesn't even know, actually. I, <laughs> um, I think I was thinking while you guys were talking, but also listening. The thing I like about myself is I think I'm very adaptable. Um, That's been something I've kind of honed in on recently. Um, Just trying to be adaptable to life changes, different people, different actions, different personalities. Just being adaptable to life because life is going to be the curveballs regardless of what happens. Like It's going to be good things, bad things, but just adapting to those things. And just dealing and handling them. Uh, I think that's... And this is more me in the last couple years. Uh, post-therapy, Antonio. Which, by the way, somebody told me they realized I stopped going to therapy last year. And I was like, I kind of took offense to that. They could tell when I stopped going to therapy. I'm like... They said, I can tell. Yeah, I can tell specific, the week. Somebody specifically said, yeah, I can tell you stopped going to therapy. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, they, was that last Sunday? Or like, no, it was like last year. It was oh, last year. Oh, I was about to say. It just sticks in my head a little bit. Um... But again, so so when I say post therapy, it's just I don't know the, my adaptability to just life in general because life is gonna throw you curveballs and, and yeah, you be on it like you're just like okay, this is the situation now and this is how I'm gonna handle it and this yeah. is like how I'm gonna like make it better and this is how I'm gonna get to the next level. You are very like okay, you have to, I feel like you have to be like even you know I've mentioned it. We're getting some unfortunate family news a couple of weeks ago about my father. It's like trying to adapt to that and then like trying to help my mother adapt to some news of stuff. It's yeah. like, um, yeah, just being adaptive was probably the thing I, I've, I like that I've adapted to being adaptable or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, yeah. just cause you, cause you know what it is? I, I'm, I'm around a lot of people at my job who complain a lot and I got this new job a month ago and just, there's a lot of people complaining about things. And I realized I'm like, there's no point in complaining because you're not going to change anything if you're right. not trying to do anything look at the situation in front of you and you have to adapt to it, whatever it is, and just figure out how to best navigate that situation. And I feel like I've gotten much better at that. I needed to hear that actually because all I've been doing is complaining at work. So Me too. I needed it's to so easy to, and there's nothing wrong with it, but it's so easy to it. But I think what I realized is it's so easy to fall into that pattern of complaining mm-hmm. that it becomes a norm and everybody's doing it. And then it's I've become very sensitive to that. Like there's a one of my best friends I grew up with in Atlanta he called me the other day, and I love him to death, but I can't talk to him anymore. It's hard for me to talk to him because he just complains, complains. It's just always like everything is so awful. But in my mind, I'm like, what are you doing to – this is your reality, but what are you doing about it, you know? So, right. Yeah. So that's what I have. 
Well, everyone, thank you for tuning in for another episode of Let Me Finish. I hope everyone enjoyed this episode of us just sitting here, just talking away. Hope you guys got some laughs or got a better understanding about us. But also remember the Twitter page is LMFPod03. Also, if you want to email us anything as far as questions, comments, whatever, the email address is letmefinish03 at gmail.com. There you go. Until next time, everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.